Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a divorce valuation expert in St. Louis, Missouri. I have the pleasure of discussing fraud in times of divorce and following the money trail with Jason Pierce, a forensic accountant in Boston, Massachusetts. Since we're talking about divorce and fraud, which are kind of two things that you're highly uh, interested in and focused in, how did you get involved in even doing valuations for divorce? Yeah, yeah. So it, like a lot of practitioners, I kind of stumbled upon it. I mean, for my background, I started in, in auditing and in, in some tax, but one of my tax clients got divorced and she said to me like, hey, can you just come tell us like what the value of this fishing business is? And I'm like, sure. Didn't know anything about it. And I'm glad that the statute of limitations is closed on that. But, but basically that one was more of the, it was, they didn't make any money. So it was really just the, uh, the, the vessel itself. But that, that was interesting and looking back, you know, maybe sparked it, but we merged in with another firm that did business valuations. And uh, so I got to work on some of that and it, it just got me uh, thinking from an audit perspective where you're just looking backwards, like, hey, how'd we do last year to, you know, business plan valuation looking forward. It's, it was much more interesting to me and, and, and especially with the tax return, just like filling out forms it, and checklists and things, I'm just not, that way, uh, turns out. So. Well, and I think that that's how a lot of people in the valuation space stumble upon it, right? Like we are doing valuations for traditional reasons, estate planning, um, partnership issues and things like that. But then people are getting divorced and business owners mm -hmm. are getting divorced. And the concept is that most of the time a business has to stay with one of the parties. You know, there's some states that will allow you to have the business with both parties. And it brings up an interesting concept that everything is different in different states. So mm -hmm. I'm in Missouri and I do a lot of work in Missouri and Illinois. You're in Massachusetts. And quite frankly, the laws and the cases that set the precedent are different in each of these states. Yep. So you kind of have to know what you're doing in that state, not just with valuation, right? Yeah, definitely. And and uh, we're, we did that skip over in Alaska part, but the uh, in Alaska, say it's a fair market value state and they have nuances, say passive appreciation. And, you know, people argue about the discounts, um, whereas there's no alimony. But in Massachusetts, there's alimony, you know, heavy lately it seems like a lot of people are focused in on this personal goodwill issue you know we could talk about that um but alimony um <clears throat> and and to your point yeah like new england's pretty packed together if you go across the the border uh new hampshire is a fair market value state but massachusetts is fair value so and there's a case law on that um and so what does that mean from a fair market value versus a fair value perspective, if you, and I see this sometimes where people come in out of state, they just apply what what it is in their state to to what the state that they're working in um, and that, that can backfire oftentimes.